So in today's video, we're going to be talking about ChatGPT and how it can be applied to the field of market research. Or more specifically, we're going to be looking at one type of market research, which is online quantitative research, which is where you would design a survey, program it in a tool like SurveyMonkey, and then collect the responses through a web browser or mobile app. ChatGPT has been all the hype for the last couple of months with lots of people excited about how this technology can be used to help us work smarter and more efficiently. While other people have legitimate concerns about how this technology might remove the need for creativity or people even raising ethical concerns about how and where this type of technology is being applied. Now, the reality is that as of today, AI driven tools like ChatGPT cannot fully replace humans. What they can do is augment our work in really, really smart ways. And if you think about the world of market research, there are a lot of steps in the process that can be very manual and time intensive. And if you apply tools like ChatGPT in the right way, it can really help you work a lot smarter. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can leverage ChatGPT to make the process of carrying out market research more efficient. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up the ChatGPT dashboard. If you haven't created an account on it, you can go and create one for free. Do note that it's becoming very popular, so it's sometimes it's not available because of high demand. For the context of this video, I want you to imagine that you're a researcher working at a big market research firm or within some kind of agency or brand, and you've been tasked with designing a questionnaire, collecting the data, and analyzing the results. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through four different prompts on ChatGPT that can assist you along the way. So the very first thing is actually helping you to design a questionnaire, which is generally one of the first things that you'll do when trying to execute a quantitative market research project. Now, sometimes you can leverage existing templates. Sometimes you have to start from scratch. And the thing you'll quickly realize about market research is that this industry is the business of asking good questions. So the way that you ask the questions really matters. And what you'll find is that ChatGPT will not answer all the questions that you need answered. So for example, when you're designing a questionnaire, you need to think about what is the question text. And you need to make sure that the question text itself or the proposition is clear, coherent, and aligned to the comprehension and understanding of the respondents. But beyond that, you have to think about technical things as well. Like, is this a single select question? Is it a rating scale question? Should I randomize the response list? And ChatGPT is not going to output a questionnaire that answers all those questions but it can give you a pretty good foundation to start working with. Let's think about a specific use case of market research. And in this case, I'm going to be looking at a brand tracking study, also known as a brand positioning study. This is where you ask a series of questions that try to establish where your brand sits relative to other competitors in the market. And then this might include asking questions like, which brands are you aware of? Which brands have you ever purchased from? Which brands would you consider purchasing from, et cetera? So I'm gonna start off by asking ChatGPT to design the survey for me. Design a survey about brand market share. Now, the interesting thing about ChatGPT is that you don't always get the same output every time you type in the same prompt. The last time I typed this in, it gave me the questions, but not the responses. And in this case, it's actually giving me both the question text and the responses. So there's some really interesting things that ChatGPT has done here. The first thing it's done is to ask a series of demographic questions, which is very smart because you generally want to have this information for data analysis. So you usually front load demographic questions. If you don't already have this data pre-collected, there are certain ways you can do that so that when you analyze the results, you can cut the data by age or gender or things like that. So it's already thought about demographic screening for me, and it's also given me things like age brackets. So when you get to about question three, this is where the main brand tracking questionnaire starts. And generally, what you'll do in a brand tracking survey is you'll just ask a series of brand funnel questions, like which of these brands are you aware of or do you recognize? Or which of these brands have you ever purchased from? Which of these brands have you ever recommended to a friend or family, et cetera, et cetera. Then you show your brand plus all the other competitor brands, and you can measure this over time if you collect the data on a monthly or quarterly basis. Now, some small things you need to take into consideration here. I didn't describe the sector of this survey to ChatGPT, and it's assumed a time interval here of past one month. That's something you would obviously want to change based on the type of sector that you're looking at. So, for example, if you're talking about cars or insurance companies, they're not going to be buying in the past month. You change that to like past one year, past six months or something like that. But overall, ChatGPT has done a pretty good job of laying out a base questionnaire here that I can start building on and putting into my survey design tool. So the second way that a tool like ChatGPT can help you in the process of carrying out market research actually relates to what you're seeing in questions like question three and four, 
where you need to put in a brand list. Now imagine for a minute, you're a brand manager or market researcher, and you're looking at food and beverage brands, and you're trying to actually run the survey in multiple countries. Let's say your brand is present in the United States, the UK, but also in Southeast Asian countries like Indonesia and Thailand. The reality is that even though your brand might be available in all those countries, the range of brands will be highly localized and you need to come up with localized brand lists to be able to track this if you're doing a multi-country study. And usually what would happen is a researcher will do some desktop research to figure out, well, what are the top brands that I need to be tracking in each of these countries? The great thing is, is that ChatGPT can do this for you really easily. So let's say that we're doing a survey about just generally food and beverage brands. And I wanted to find out what are the top food and beverage brands in a country like the Philippines. What I can do is ask ChatGPT, what are the top food and beverage brands in the Philippines? Now you can see what it's doing is it's identifying the top brands. It's also giving me a nice description of each of the brands. Now these, the thing is food and beverage is a really broad category. It covers a lot of different things, alcoholic brands, fast moving drink brands, et cetera. So you can get more specific with ChatGPT to try and come up with a more tailored list. So in this case, what I've done now is I've asked it, what are the top non-alcoholic drink brands in the Philippines? And so this is a little bit more specific than the first list because I'm looking at only, I've zeroed into non-alcoholic drink brands. I could go even further. I could say, give me a list of sugar-free fruit drink brands and ChatGPT will probably be able to give me a good list. And now all I have to do is take this list and plug it into the brand list for my original questionnaire. And again, this is usually something that is done through desktop research. This information isn't that hard to find, but I've just taken something that will sometimes take 30 minutes of desktop research and shrunk it down into about 30 seconds. So the next example I want to give you relates to when you're asking questions about what we call attributes in a survey or features of a product or service. So sometimes you might want to ask the respondent, what are the top features you would look for when you're buying a TV set or a smartphone? And we've got a question like that in the original questionnaire designed by ChatGPT. So question seven asked, which of the following factors influence your purchasing decisions for the brands you mentioned in question four? Now, what's nice about this is that ChatGPT has given me a sector agnostic list of attributes here. This means that it can be applied to just any sector, regardless of whether it's insurance, automotive, electronics, et cetera, which is fine. You know, these are common attributes that people might care about price versus quality, et cetera. But it is very common that if you're looking at a specific sector, like TV sets, for example, that you would ask about features that are more specific to that category. So in the case of a TV, things like screen size, resolution, does it support 4K, HDR, all that kind of stuff. So again, what we can do is we can ask ChatGPT to come up with a list of attributes based on a specific sector. So the prompt I've typed in here is, can you create a list of features that someone would look for in a TV? And you can see now that ChatGPT is coming up with a broad categorization of different attributes or features that you might look for. So like display technology or screen size or resolution. And beyond the attributes, ChatGPT is also giving me a nice little description of each of these features. So you can see that ChatGPT has identified 10 attributes or features that people might care about when they're buying a TV set. So things like display technologies, an OLED screen or a QLED screen, the resolution, the refresh rate, overall design, et cetera. And beyond the attributes themselves, they've given us this nice little description that we can use to better understand each of these attributes as well. So going back up to a question like number seven in the original questionnaire, if you were to make this uh, question text more tailored to ask something like, which of the following factors influence your, your purchase decisions when making it buying a TV, you can just drop that list uh, that ChatGPT has created for us right into this uh, list of responses. Okay, so the examples we've given so far really relate to the process of designing a questionnaire. And again, it's not gonna do everything for you. It can give you a good base list of questions and attributes and brand lists to work with. You're still gonna have to plug this into a survey design tool and make important decisions like which question types apply to which questions, do you need any scripting logic like response randomization, all that stuff. So the last example I wanna show you relates more to data analysis. And this specifically applies to the world of open-ended questions. If you're not familiar with an open-end, this is a question in a survey that allows the respondent to type free form into a text box. 
Now, open-ended questions have their benefits and their cons. Used in the right way, open-ended questions are always for short, can get you very organic and natural responses. The downside is that the effort it takes to make sense of this data can be quite high because you need to take the data, clean it, and essentially transform it into quantitative data through something we call coding. So when I talk about coding in the context of market research and open ends, we're not talking about like coding an app or something like that. Coding is a process of essentially organizing your open-ended responses into different topics or categories. And this can be done in different ways. It can be done manually, where you either design a preset number of codes or categories, and you go through each of the responses one by one and associate them with your categories, which then you can run some statistical tests on, like what's the frequency of codes under the different categories and stuff like that. But beyond the manual approach, which is actually still very common, automated solutions do exist for text mining and text analytics, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, a lot of that functionality is locked behind commercial tools that can cost a lot of money. There are also open source versions of text analytics tools that you can access, but it does require some skills in data science to be able to run your analysis via coding languages like Python or an R. And unfortunately for some people, the learning curve for that is going to be quite steep. That being said, ChatGPT, I found, can do some coding of open-ended responses fairly well. It's not perfect. It doesn't work terribly well at scale, but it can actually be good enough if you have a small to moderate sized base of open-ended data. So what I have here is a standard raw data set for a survey. If you're not familiar with this, basically every row is one respondent and every column is a different question. And I wanna look at question number four here, or column Q, this was an open-ended question in the survey, which asked, you can see in row number one there, what new features would you want to see in a smartphone? So the people were allowed to type in as much or as little as they wanted. They could type in one feature, multiple features. But the context here is open ends that relate to smartphone fe features that people would want to see. And what I can do is I'm just going to copy part of this list. I'm not going to copy the whole thing. I could copy the whole thing, but it, it'll take longer. So I'm going to use just a part of this list for now. I've already cleaned it up a bit. I've gotten rid of some of the NAS, NAs, not applicable NOS. You'll get a lot of those in open ends, but let's just take a snapshot of this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to help categorize these open-ended responses. So, so the prompt I'm using here is, can you help categorize the following list of open-ended data? I'm gonna hold shift and press enter, and then copy and paste in the list of open ends. And what you can see here is that ChatGPT is now going through the process of actually assigning each of those open ends into different categories. And it's not perfect. It's not going to get everything right, but it's doing it surprisingly well, especially considering that this type of functionality is generally locked behind very expensive software. What ChatGPT has done here is the, the word at the top here is the code or the category it's derived. And each of the bullets here are the verbatim open ends that you would find in that list. And I've had different results. I found that sometimes when I plug in the data, it just ignores some open ends. They just disappear from the list. So you might find that what is listed here does not always equal the original list. But again, it's generally pretty close. I've been pleasantly surprised with the quality of the output from feeding ChatGPT open-ended data. You could easily copy and paste that list into Excel and start running some analysis. You can also ask ChatGPT to play with the data a little bit as well. So I'm gonna ask it to convert the above codes into a table. Now what you can see it's done is it's created a simple two column table and I can actually just copy and paste this and go back over to Excel. I'm gonna create a new worksheet here, paste it, and you'll find that it has done a pretty good job of putting that into an Excel table friendly format. And so now that it's in Excel, I can do all kinds of different stuff with the data. So ChatGPT has separated each of these open end responses by a comma which means I can break these apart and run some additional analysis if I wanted to see how many open ends contribute to each of the codes. So a quick way to do that is I can just highlight the rows, go to the data ribbon, text the columns. I'm going to click on delimited next, and I want to make it comma delimited because there is a comma separating each of the terms that uh, ChatGPT has categorized. 
And then I'm just going to click finish. And now it's just separated each of the, not the words, but the original phrases across different columns. And then I can figure out things like durability has eight codes contributing to it versus gaming only has uh, five codes, et cetera. So there's lots of stuff I can do with it now that it's in Excel. So overall, I'm very, very impressed with what ChatGPT can do in the realm of text analysis. And again, you got to manage your expectations here. It's not going to be absolutely perfect, but I have found fairly good results from using ChatGPT to help in the process of automated coding. So that's it for this video. I hope these tips were useful and thanks again for watching.